the box seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of Your Box Seat. Yes, it is brought to you by our stable of sponsors. A massive thank you to them again for continuing to get behind the show. No Michael Guerin this week, uh, Matthew Cross has joined us. Uh, it is Woodlands Derby Week, it's Oaks Week. There's a whole lot of good races at Addington on Friday night and it's Waimati Cup Week as well, so a lot to talk about, Matthew. Certainly is, Greg, and 24 days away from the race by Grins and the Tab slot race as well. So between now and then, so much can happen. We talk about it sort of a month out from your Cup Week meeting, how so many things can change, horses can progress, horses can get worse. A couple of slots still to be announced in both of them, so uh, looking forward to hearing about one of those who has been announced later on in the show. And plenty to look back on last week. I guess the biggest talking point this week is around the Northern Pacing Derby. Looking forward to the next hour. All right, so what can you look forward to on your box seat uh, this week? Here's your rundown. We will have a look back and forward uh, with the massive night on Friday night ahead. Carter Del Getty, yes, he got a Group 2 at Alexandra Park for the first time. Old Town Road has progressed. Uh, towards uh, the race by Grins where he finished second last year. He got the business done off 30 metres last week. Uh, we will update everything about the Night of Champions. Yes, uh, David Branch will come on and talk to us about that. And of course, uh, Shannon Price will be with us too. We'll talk to her about her superstar pacer coming for the race. Muscle Mountain got back on track and winning. Uh, we'll have a look at the luck of the Irish, or it was a great effort by Andy McCook. Uh, and then we'll preview the other races uh, that I've already mentioned. But let's get into Alexandra Park. The Derby stake boosted to $200,000. Here was the prelude last week. It was a garage size stakes heat. Uh, dreams are free. That's him in the Nathan Williamson colours, sitting parked against a hot field. Uh, down the outside is Cold Chisel to their inside, Chase a Dream. And of course, a major hot was there as well, but on debut at the park. They simply shouldn't be able to do this, but he did. Let's hear from Nathan Williamson, trainer driver post race. Here's my hat. I'll throw it in the ring for the Derby in seven nights' time. How many horses can come to the park, sit outside, a couple of Group 1 winners and, and dash away like he did, mate. That that must be really pleasing. Yeah, real proud of him, well, to do what he did tonight. First look at the park, uh, yeah, no, and he should should only improve with it too. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to next week. What I noticed about him is he's a real laid-back character, isn't he? Going around in the parade ring tonight and he took everything in. It's like he's been here a hundred times. Yeah, look, he's just started to turn the corner. We took him on that trip to Christchurch um, prior to Christmas, and that's sort of been the makings of him. And, uh, yeah, he's just sort of turned the corner the last few weeks and just really uh, matured. So, no, thrilled with him. And, uh, yeah, as I say, we, we can't wait for next week. How did the race unfold for you? Because I know you popped out and you, you kind of got them going at the 400. They weren't, weren't running that quick. And you, you got to the leader very quickly. But, gee, once you got there, he, he did it relatively easily. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Zach obviously peeled a wee bit. Um, peeled early, just probably trying to get the jump on Mark a wee bit, who was held up in the trail. And yeah, when I uh, when I yeah give my fellow the offers to go, he certainly uh, yeah he certainly you know he he extended lovely. So no, absolutely thrilled with him. And uh, yeah, no, he was strong through the line too. So no, we're you know couldn't be happier going into uh, next week with him. What will you do with him during the week, mate? Will it be just a case of just taking him over and not nothing too much going into a a, a derby? Uh, no, he'll have a fairly solid week. Um, there's there's improvement there, I feel. Like, um, you know, that was his first run, and it was probably, um, I know it was sticky conditions, but it was just a dash up the straight. So um, I think he'll benefit from that. And, uh, no, we're uh, yeah, going into the big race. He'll uh, need to be cherry right. But, uh, no, we certainly couldn't be happy with how he handled it tonight. And, uh, yeah, very excited. Might have to be happy with Cole Chisel. I thought uh, rounded off the race quite nice, you know, and a bit of a tactical affair. Was uh, you got to give it to Nathan. Uh, Nathan's one that was a super effort. Um, like we said before, it's just very hard to make ground. You're sort of getting stuck in the mud out there, and you know we sprinted home, but you just sort of couldn't peel any off him. Um, is what it is. But you know, leading into next week, it's it's a nice build up. 
He looks a bit like Santa Claus there with half the Alexandra Park track on his beard, doesn't he, Matthew? But let's concentrate about the serious business of this Woodlands derby. Dreams are free, outstanding. When I spoke to Nathan earlier in the week, he was quite concerned about the right-handed way of going. It was only a sprint home, and it probably made it a little bit easier the position that he was in. But they don't often sit parked against Group 1 horses like Cold Chisel, like Chaser Dream and do that. He comes up with barrier eight this week. That won't make it easy. A couple of runs uh, in behind Jeremiah, I thought outstanding. Uh, when he finished fifth at the park, um, I thought his run was very good. And Christopher Dance, who Tony Hulahi will drive this week, uh, crawled a little bit by the draw outside of the second row. But a lot to break down about this year's derby. When Cold Chisel comes up with what looks to be the best barrier draw in the race for a horse who's been so competitive over the last six or seven months. But there'll be fireworks early here, I'm sure of it. Major Hot, I'd be very surprised if they didn't push the button with him and roll forward. And I actually see the barrier draw for Dreams Are Free as being somewhat of an advantage. He's not going to be in any sort of trouble early. Nathan can just find his feet wide out. And if he presses forward, as soon as they back it off, there's no horse in the race who's not going to hand up the park spot to him. And he might even get the lead if a horse like Major Hot is there. That makes it tough for a horse like Chaser Dream to be giving them a head start if he gets shuffled back. Look, I reckon it's an overreaction that the, the market move. Not so much around Dreams Are Free shortening in. I think it's a, a huge overreaction of drifting Chaser Dream out in the market to the price that he's got to now. Dropping him on one poor run. I think it's ridiculous. Second row barrier draw, if they go like Cut Cats early, we know that he has the brilliance to come over top of them. To the eye, he probably was disappointing to his standards last week, getting stuck down in the hard going of the track. Um, Mark Purden, I believe, is up there all week uh, looking after the horses. That's got to be a huge factor heading in towards the derby as well. So he'll be cherry ripe this week. I wouldn't be dropping him. Dreams are free. You can't fault him, though. Beautifully gated horse. You can see there with that head-on shot. So much power about him. And with that experience of going right-handed for the first time would only be better. So between him, Cold Chisel, Chase a Dream, it'll come down to whoever gets the right sort of run. But it's going to be one heck of a race, Greg. Uh, we walk by faith. So I spoke to Mark Burton about his whole team. Uh, we walk by faith. Uh, that uh, Victorian campaign has uh, been squashed. That's why the horse is back uh, for the derby. Uh, he was excellent, of course, uh, winning here uh, about what, a month, six weeks ago. He, he's a pretty good horse, we walk by faith. He's a Group 1 winner, as we know. He's got a beautiful draw. He's $6, so Mark will drive him. Major Hot needs a driver because Tony's now with Christopher Dance. And I spoke to Logan Hollis about him. He said couldn't couldn't be happier with him. We'll see a trial he was in a little bit later in the show. He uh, he is bang on for this. And on Chaser Dream, he said, oh, I know he was down in the slushy stuff, but he was disappointing. Not the ideal lead into a derby. However, he did say he's in a good space. He's very, very uh, well within himself. So I'm sort of with you. He can bounce back here. I'm just delighted that it's a big full field. Cold Chisel comes up with barrier one again for the third time in about the last four starts. So he's going to get every chance from there. But it's a great addition of the derby. As it will be, the next race we're going to preview, Matthew, which is the Pascoe's, the Jewellers, Northern Oaks. Here is last week's lead-up. It was the $100,000 feature. The Caduceus Club uh, three-year-old Phillies ladyship stakes in front. Uh, the blue blood, if you like. Uh, her name is All You Need Is Me. Uh, Carter Del Getty grabs a group uh, two at the park for the first time. We'll get to him post-race and then talk about those in behind, including a charging Ruby Rowe and, of course, Duchess Megxit. Carter Del Getty gets his first group success under the ribbon of light. Photo second, Duchess Megxit. Gee, that was impressive tonight, mate. Yeah, um, felt good sitting behind her too, but the first half of the race wasn't real pretty. Um, done a lot for the lead and probably a quick lead time and then the mishap, mishap when she pulled a shoe but yeah the last bit was yeah very nice. Take us through that because uh, live on camera I could see 1400 out you it kind of looked like you knuckled over I, I didn't see the, the shoe fly but did it unstable or unbalance her because she didn't seem to miss a beat afterwards? Yeah you're right geez it was some scary times um, I think any other horse is lucky it was her um, she came straight back to it and, and didn't panic and gallop or anything but yeah, just uh, obviously stood on a shoe, flicked it off, and to her credit, she kept going because in that situation, horses can easily go down and it cannot be pretty. You go forward to the 2700 next week. You're going to look forward to that. I mean, 
you did the whole coastal babe off the gate, but you showed pretty good gate speed and stuff, and it was a massive lead-up time, 40. Um, she's burnt the candle at both ends and show, showed her real quality tonight. Yeah, you're right. She did do it at both ends, and I think even after that, it sort of gives me the confidence now. She doesn't have to blast the gate. Um, I think, yeah, she can do do a lot of other things too now. Um, we've had good she done it in the end, so, yeah, it sort of boosts the confidence a slight bit. You'd be proud of the way the filly went tonight. Uh, wasn't an ideal race for you. You had to probably pop at the time. You didn't really want to pop. Yeah, it would have been nice to get cover for a bit longer and um, get a cosy run leading into next week. But, you know, she was super. Uh, she was strong and, and brave to the finish. Um, just got beat by a very, very nice filly tonight. The track out there, I mean, you, you said off camera that it's pretty tough going and there's not many making ground from the back of the field. And she was she was burning down the back. So for her to stick on as well as she did and hold second, um, puts her in good stead for next week. Well, 100%. And you know, I sort of said to Scotty, she gave me a wee bit of a feel that maybe she would sharpen up with that run. It's always hard to say. Um, but those good ones, you know, after a hard one, they tend to get a little bit better with it. So, uh, like I said, going into next week, 2-7, we'll be looking for a... Uh, Bit of a cosier trip, I guess, and hopefully we've got the speed to roll over top of them, which uh, will be right up her early. I think you'll be mighty proud of the filly tonight, the way she hit the line. Yeah, she went real nice well. Um, handled herself good around the track and uh, hit the line really nice. So, um, yeah, hope for a good draw next week. Yeah, I mean, she, she's made good ground on a really quick tempo. Did, did she probably come to the end of it, or did she just keep finding the line? Uh, she kept finding the line pretty good. Um, just, you know, she was a wee bit green in stages, but she can be that way... Uh, the other way of going too. So, look, I was real, all in all, I was real happy with her in the sticky conditions, and uh, I think she will benefit for next week. 57th running of the Pascos, the Jewellers, Northern Oak. She comes up with a beautiful barrier draw of two. Matthew, all you need is me. You'd imagine she'd roll forward. Ruby Rose, actually the only horse that's beaten her, and they went about 155 down south. There wasn't much between them on that occasion. The question mark horse is Coastal Bay. $11, so $1.40 all you need is me, $11 Coastal Babe, seven fifty Ruby Row. Duchess Megs, it looks and always has done to me uh, like she's built for an oak. She's $6.50 from the wide front row draw. Tricky race for both Coastal Babe and Duchess Megs. If Coastal Babe tries to hold out all you need is me, <coughs> excuse me, at the start, they risk both getting on the steel and undoing themselves and setting it up for a horse like Duchess Megxit. And Duchess Megxit probably has two options, either go back, try and swoop late, or roll forward and sit parked. She's gone 2.42 in the slush, Greg. That's some sort of run. Almost fallen over at the halfway mark of the race and kicked away, pricked the ears 20 metres short of the post. Uh, Carter stuck a 28.7 into them coming off the back and it really did take the stuffing out of the other fillies in the race. If she had applauded to the line, you'd probably question the 2700, but I think she was doing her best work late. She's a great bet, all you need is me, and I think Carter and Cran and Chrissy will get another Group 1 as a combination. Duchess Megs, it will be the big improver heading into it. I, I really thought Ruby Rowe found the line with, with some sort of power first look over uh, the trip there at Alexandra Park. So if she got a cushy run into it, I don't think there's much between her and Duchess Megs. And Coastal Bay, maybe her best option is to try and posse up, sit in the trail behind all you need is me and beat it. Yep, I agree with you, and let's hope the weather is improved for Friday night because it did look like down on the inside it was a little bit off, So, um, and that's no fault of anybody other than the weather gods. Uh, another of the features, not at Group 1 level, but it's a good race. 30-second running of the Auckland Co-op uh, Taxis uh, Free For All. Let's go back and have a look at Old Town Road. Great to see him back on track, and we're going to get uh, John Dickey to tell us what the problem was last week and how much improvement he'll take out of this because uh, the $60,000 free-for-all will be a tricky sort of a challenge. We've also got to look at Republican Party, who uh, was excellent uh, when uh, going to the trials last weekend. But here's John Dickey. Beaten. He shows that fight that he's got inside him. He gets the win over Alter Wise Guys. John, it was a little bit of an uncomfortable watch, but, gee, when he needed to dig in, he really did at the finish. Yeah, I think so, Craig. Um... I didn't actually see the race panning out like that. But um, yeah, I'm glad he got over the line. And as I say, Josh said he fought hard. But um, if you had seen the horse a week ago today, Craig, coming out of the box on last Friday morning on, th on three legs, you'd think, how the hell did he get here today? So to his credit, you know, he, he fought real hard. And um, hey, winning's everything. Well, it's a credit to you and to Josh and the team that work, work so hard to get this horse here tonight. How's he pulled up after the rate? How's his heart rate? And what did Josh say in the running? Well, he... Obviously, he, he, we weren't going to drive him like that. Um, they were going too slow in front, so he needed to do some work. 
Um, he's pulled up really, really good. I couldn't tell you what his heart rate is. I'm sort of, um, I haven't, haven't done that, of course. But um, now he did pull up good. Um, and uh, when he does pull up good like that, he's always really good the, the following week. So touch wood, we're back here next week. He will be back here this week. It'll be Friday, 4.50 he is. Don't stop dreaming's in there, ninety. He's the favourite for the race by Grins as well. And this horse, Republican Party, who will be fresh up, uh, Matthew. Christopher Dance is in front, and this is a really impressive trial from him. But it was a nice effort by Republican Party. Sectionals were very good, 56, 26, 3. And once they sort of got to the line, I, I liked what he was doing, Republican Party. You, you know this horse well, he's pretty smart. He's a good horse, he's a really good horse, Republican Party. First up from the barrier draw, could be somewhat of a question mark, but look, obviously uh, it's a, a real stepping stone for things to come for him. The interesting thing here will be what happens with Kango at the start. Whether something has a crack at him early or they just let Kango roll forward, that could mean self-assured could be sitting in the trail. Kango would be pretty hard to get past. Now I know self-assured is probably a length below his absolute best, but if Kango leads, self-assured could get himself into a pretty good spot. Be a tactical battle, Greg, but Old Town Road would only improve off that. Sectionals on the uh, Slushy track there, 57, 1 and 27 and change on the way home. Pretty impressive. And he's a horse who always improves with racing as well. Just great to see John Dickey get him to 100%. And we certainly hope for the connections that they can maintain that for the race by Grins in 24 days. Yeah, well, the Hydroflow team will be hoping so. Finished second last year, of course. Let's move away uh, from the older brigade, if you like, and have a look at a couple of these young gun heats. Here is Confederate. Who got the job done from the trail was uh, the modicum of some very strong support, Matthew. Does have to come off the second row this week. $5. Bookie's got the market out already. Uh, five fifty dollars Cyclone Geordie. $6 Sugar Ray Lincoln, uh, who's a pretty handy sort of a horse and got itself into second position here. But Confederate did this really easily. Beautifully bred. Uh, Better's Delight, Heart of Dixie. I think it was over 200000 at the sales this horse. I reckon he'll get beaten on Friday by the horse who ran second to him, Greg, Sugar Ray Lincoln. Barrier number one for Sugar Ray Lincoln. He's raced parked for the last lap and behind Confederate last week and still had the audacity to keep trucking towards the line. So with the run under his belt, the fact Confederate's got the second row barrier draw, I think you can take the 5 or $6 around Sugar Ray Lincoln, the full brother, to copy that and think that with that run under his belt at the park, he'd only improve off it. Peg's the place to be. He's got barrier one. I reckon fill your boots with him. All right, six dollars the price uh, there, Matthew. Let's have a look at the ladies uh, who are going around in their first heat. Uh, here is uh, I'm Sandra D getting up on the outside of one and only. One and only fights back and holds off here. 59.29. Favourite for this race as we see these two fillies come down the straight. It was a nice fighting effort by uh, one and only in the hands of Josh Dickey. Crystal Hackett will drive one and only on Friday night. Zach will drive I'm Sandra D who's the horse up on the outside. Uh, and Scotty Phelan will drive, uh, you're the one that I want. Uh, Just You Wait is the favourite though, Matthew, from the Dalgetty Barn, $1.60. I reckon there'll be some movement in this market. I know Just You Wait was excellent on debut uh, in behind Lincoln Lou, but uh, I'm Sandra D, one and only you saw there, and you're the one that I want, have all got breeding and have all got ability. So I reckon there might be some changes in the market here. Yeah, looking through those trials, you're the one that I wanted to trial at Alexandra Park last Friday night when the track was pretty testing. The two-year-old fillies don't trial much better than what she did. She ran away and scored pretty easily. She's beautifully bred. She's out of a full sister to dream about me, half-sister to Chris and me. You speak of that breeding. Uh, one and only out of only for you, a Group 1 winner as well. I like the way one and only moves. Scopey sort of filly who I think will get better with racing. The Barry Purden and Scott Phelan team have got a pretty strong hand in there. I'd be very, very surprised if all three of their runners weren't fighting out the finish. Yeah, It's going to be uh, an interesting uh, contest, the first of our fillies' heats. Uh, just want to have a look at this horse, Jollimont, being driven by Mark Purden on this occasion uh, for Anna Donnelly. Goes around a race number four this week, inside second row. It's a decent race, though. Uh, Nelson's boy, McKendrick, 2IC, Artisan, Mickey Shan, don't stop me now. But he's a pretty pretty decent animal, this Jollymont. He only went up to a rating 61 off the back of this win, uh, Matthew, but he footed it with uh, the better three-year-olds of his year. 
And he might even be a better horse coming from off a sit as well, Jolly Mont. Mark took him to the lead here, controlled that he was never, ever getting beaten with the way that that race panned out. But one on the second row, if he can clear traffic, Jolly Mont has a really super turn of foot on him. And the race doesn't look much stronger than, than what he was able to beat on Friday night. So I reckon go again with him. Yeah, I think you can. Just the inside second row might uh, be the only concern there. Excellent program, as it should be, uh, for Woodlands Derby Night out of Alexandra Park alongside the other Group 1, of course, the Pascoes, the Jewellers, Northern Oaks. We're about to take our first break here on your box seat. Yes, it is brought to you by our stable of sponsors. On the other side, we'll update you on the Night of Champions. It's getting really close. Friday the 12th of April will be a night to remember. The previous two uh, big races, the race by Grin, of course, Grin's rather, won by Self Assured and then copy that. Who will it be on the 12th of April? So much happening in and around it. I thought I'd take the opportunity to catch up with the CEO of Cambridge Raceway, David Branch, and get the latest on the Night of Champions. Well, Dave, they say the third round of a golf major is moving day, and in terms of the Grins and the Tab Trot slot, I think the last week, well, that's the only thing that I can marry it up with because it feels exactly like that. Yeah, for sure. I guess I guess it had, um, it's been a bit of a slow burn getting into this year. Uh, I think even only a couple of weeks back, we only had one or two horses confirmed for the race by Grins. So uh, as you say, they, it seems every day there's an update, there's another horse coming, there's one that's not. And um, yeah, it's exciting. And that's that's what it's all about. All right, obviously the disappointment that Leap to Fame isn't coming off the back of his Miracle Mile win, but I suppose in some respects it's not surprising. And in another respect, it's provided opportunity, particularly for one horse from the same state. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Obviously um, gutting for everyone that we, we won't see the, see the champ over here, but as you say, opens it up and, and um, has opened the door to speak the truth to, to come in from... From Queensland as well, so yeah, I guess silver linings there, and and we still get a, another Australian over for the race, so um, that's that's what we want. All right, last year you all had Old Town Road in the race; he finished second. He's been confirmed this week as well. Yeah, so he's another one today, going back in the Hydroflow slot. So uh, yeah, he the, that's exciting as well to have him back in, and 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 goes in with South Assured as ones that have been in the race before, which is which is cool as well. All right, Rock and Roll Do was secured uh, recently too. The interest from the Australians, particularly around the trotting race, to have four of the six confirmed slots at this stage to be Australian, beyond your wildest dreams? Uh, for sure. I think, um, yeah, it's, it's shaping up to be the race of the, race of the decade, I think. Um, as, a, as someone who loves trotting, yeah, I couldn't be more excited about that. And, and to see it all coming together and... Obviously, we're still a month out, so so um, everything crossed that that all the horses make it there in full fitness. But um, it's it's a dream to have those those top four Australians taking on our best New Zealanders, um, and it seems like they're not going to clash at all until that race. So um, yeah, it's going to be one for the ages, I think. Uh, just in terms of the sweepstake, it's on that race this year. How are tickets going, and how do people get tickets? 
Yeah, yeah. So we've moved that over to the to the TAB trot this year. Um, they've sort of got behind that and promoting the promoting the sweepstake is another way for people to to get involved. And um, so all of that information is on the Night of Champions website, nightofchampions.nz, or or just the Cambridge Raceway website. Uh, the the key difference with the sweepstake this year is we've set up a fully uh, integrated online system, so you can actually go in, you can choose your number between one and two thousand. Uh, then there'll be eight winners that have drawn a horse in that race. So, so you think of how even that race potentially could be, and and um, the prize pool is still a hundred thousand dollars and fifty thousand to the winner. So, someone again will win fifty thousand dollars. As cool. was the case last year, a random just rocked into uh, your bar on course and um, the clubhouse and walked away with fifty k. So it can happen, and it did happen last year. Dave, one of the other exciting things about this year's Night of Champions is the boys get paid are getting involved. In fact, anyone can get involved. They're having a putters club on the night, which if you go to the TAB homepage, you can join right now. Yeah, that's right. And that that's huge for us as an industry, I think. You know, um, you see the power of them on the Karaka Million night uh, and what they bring to an event. So not only will be, there be 150 uh, of, the, of the boys here, but um, to, to have them, I guess, Spotlighting, highlighting our industry is massive, and yeah, I just hope that I hope that everyone gets in behind it. As you say, you can jump online, you can join now from the TAB website. It's being promoted there really well, and um, one, it, it helps turnover, but it, yeah, as I say, the benefits for us as an industry are um, yeah are, are huge, and, and just eyes on our sport, which is what what we really want. All right, people could just Google Night of Champions, Cambridge Raceway. All of the details are there. It's exciting. We've still got five slots to go between the two races. A whole lot more information to come out about it. But they get online, get their tickets. Coterie are going to be there. Um, it's, it's just going to be an enormous occasion. And, and it's what you hoped you would get to. And within three years, it's pretty quick for an event like this. Yeah, yeah, there's always, um, you know, we're, we've got a great team here who, who want to pull everything apart and put it back together and we always sit down and go, how can we make things bigger and better? And um, yeah, as you say, what we've achieved in three years is awesome. Um, we're always pushing for that next thing, but to see everything come together like this, to have an event called the Night of Champions and have some some real champions here from something that didn't exist, I guess, three years ago is is pretty cool and something we need to reflect on as well. But, um, yeah, we couldn't be more excited and uh, it's going to be here before we know it, which we can't All wait for. All right, we'll catch up with you in the next couple of weeks for sure and uh, thanks for your time on the box seat. Awesome, thanks, Greg. So great to get that information from uh, David Branch. Of course, you can join in by grabbing your sweepstake ticket. Uh, go to the Night of Champions website or the Cambridge Raceway uh, website. They did this last year, Matthew. A bloke rocked up there to uh, uh, the clubhouse on course, bought one ticket and walked away with 50000 He hadn't even heard of copy that. So, um, yeah, there's an opportunity there for anyone. And you get to pick your number uh, this year too. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool way of getting you involved in what is this year. It's been switched to the tab trot. Yeah, and I think he's picked the same number as well, Greg. So yeah, good has. luck to him and his family trying to go uh, back to back there. And it's a great way to kind of get everybody involved and feel like they're part of the action as well. We can all just rock up on track and, and watch the race. But to have a vested interest in who is victorious with a whole lot riding on it, I think is a great incentive from the club. And it's going to be a ripping night, Greg. And with the addition of that trot race, could be one of the best race meetings that we've seen for a long time under lights. So, yeah, good on the club. And uh, I like what they're doing with both of the races. Yeah, certainly the richest. And as a result, and there's so many things, permutations, changes uh, with these slot races. Last week we lost Leap to Fame, but it's meant that another Queenslander is turning up. Speak the Truth is his name, trained by Shannon Price, and I got the chance to have a chat to her earlier this week. Absolute pleasure to be joined on the box seat by Shannon Price. Um, Shannon, first of all, congratulations on what you've been doing with your star pacer, Speak the Truth, and well done on getting a slot for the race by Grins. Isn't it amazing how things just unfold sometimes your way? Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly right, Greg. Uh, you know, we had a bit of luck after the we won that race in Sydney, the Cordina Chicken Sprint. Uh, the phone was running hot after that, and uh, yeah, it was just a matter of sifting through which was the best uh, offer for us. And uh, yeah, we accepted um, Hidden Honey, which is John Green's slot, and yep, we're booked and ready to go. 
Yeah, we can't wait to see you at Cambridge. Let's give a bit of a context and background to this horse because if people don't follow Queensland Harness, where's he come from? We know at two and for a little part of his three-year-old career, he'd showed you plenty, but he had a fair amount of time off, didn't he? Yeah, I actually, um, I brought him out of the Sydney APG sales and uh, off um, Stuart Hunter, who actually bred the horse and used to train our horses for us before I started training. So it's probably fitting that, it, you know, one of our best horses is from Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, now I bought him from the sales and he got broken in down at um, Sam Hewitt, broke him in at Goulburn and then he sent him up to us. And when we took him to the, he, he always liked him. He said, he's a smart horse and he'll be, he'll be a nice horse. And then when we took him to the educations and trials, he basically got lapped, I guess you could say. His first trial, he got beat 88 metres. So it wasn't very encouraging, but uh, then he improved a bit more and only got beat 80 in his next trial. But as time's um, shown us, he's never been a good trialer. So I guess you could ignore all these trials, what he does. He's, he just knows the difference between trialing and racing. But uh, then, yeah, we raced him as a two-year-old and um, he, won, he ran second in the group one triad there in uh, July and then we spelled him and brought him back and he had a mishap in the paddock there where he, we're not sure whether his mate kicked him in the head or he got he ran into a post <laughs> we don't know but he ended up breaking his eye socket so he had to go and have surgery on that and was at the vets for a month and then we worked him back up and got him to the races and then he got a, uh, a crack in his foot um, in the bar which ended up getting going up an infection went up through his coronet and then he lost half his foot so it took us 10 months to get that to grow down before we could start working him again and then yeah by the time that was over it was time to race as a four-year-old well to be fair it's probably stood to him because he's come back as a four-year-old obviously he went through the Queensland carnival uh, he won the inaugural running of the Hayden which I know meant so much to you and then you got him to an inter-dominion series and through to the final and um, he, you know, he raced with great uh, credit throughout that series. So, um, yeah, it, it's fair to say it probably helped him develop. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's he's still six months behind all the other horses, you know, the free for all horses and horses of his age group, like Leap to Fame, because they race throughout their three old season and we missed all the derbies and everything. So we've only had the 28 starts and they've had like 48 and 50 starts. So you can see we're a fair way, you know, six months behind them. And that was also part of the reason why we didn't go to Perth with him because racing over there is, you know, he would have had two really hard runs, hardest runs of his life over there within seven days. And I think just for the horse, like I can space him out a bit more in New Zealand by staying for the messenger and Taylor Mile. So um, that will sort of suit him a little bit better. Um, you know, it's, it, we're still playing catch-ups. Like, you know, I guess you could say he's already contested in Dominion and a Miracle Mile, and he's not even really a free-for-aller yet. Yeah, absolutely. He's won over half a million dollars, though, so there's clearly a massive motor there. We saw that in the Cordina. We saw how well he went in the Miracle Mile. He's now coming to the race by Grins, which um, we're very excited about. I'm sure you are. You call him Owen. Why do you call him Owen? Uh, no particular reason, I, I guess, when we're just naming all the young ones, we have to think up names on the spot for them. So it just came out with Owen, I guess, because Owen Wilson, the actor, was probably big at the time. So that sort of suited him, Owen. Yep. All right. Um, you've got another four-lettered name who drives him, Adam Sanderson. We know him well here in New Zealand. He'll be excited too. And he's been with your stable for a wee while now. And, and I know how much you enjoy having him part of your team. Yeah, no, Adam's been driving them for about eight years now, I think it is. Um, couldn't even remember the first horse he drove for me or won, for, won on for me. So but he's a Kiwi, so he can't wait to get back to New Zealand. He's already got his bag packed and his passport ready for the trip, so he's looking forward to it. All right. We won't get to see him in the lead-up race due to flights and, and when you can, can arrive. Um, what will he do between now and then? And you're staying at Barry Purden's, I understand. Yeah, he's nominated on Saturday night at Albion Park for a uh, what's called a Band 4 to Band 2 race, which is the, the grade before free-for-all. So he's uh, nominated for that. And then we'll see how he comes through that, whether he has one more race or just a trial, just to top him off for the 12th of April in New Zealand. And he flies in on the Sunday before the, the Friday race. Um, and, yeah, we're lucky enough to stay at Barry and Scott, Scott's place. So that, that should be good. What's his greatest attribute? We know he's got a good early speed. We know he carries the speed for a long way. Um, what do you think is his greatest strengths? 
he can run fast for a long way. <laughs> I've always said yeah. that. <laughs> he's funny. He's got a high cruising speed um, and he just tries so hard. Like he, he he never stops. He just doesn't give up. Like in the Miracle Mile, we didn't think he was going to run third halfway up the straight, but he hung on for third, which was a really good effort considering the hard run he had the week before. But now he tries. He just, he just doesn't stop. He's a good trier. All right. And you've suggested you're going to stick around for those other two races. Have you done much? the right-handed way or do you mix up his work uh, as just part of his normal routine? Uh, when we work them at home, um, we work trip work and he does his first trip right-handed. Right. I have raced uh, another mare over there and um, back in 2007. So we'll sort of follow the same path. We'll give him a good workout right-handed before he goes. So make sure he can handle all that, but um, shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem for him. I mean, she adjusted good and this one's, he's a smart horse, so he should, yeah. should be okay with it. All right. You're representing Queensland. You're representing Australia. It's pretty exciting time. And uh, I know how much time and effort goes into these horses and goes into all your horses to be fair. So um, yeah, magic to have you part of the race by Grins. Can't wait to see you across our side of the Tasman. Yeah, no, it's definitely going to be a, a wonderful experience. Um, we're, we're, yep, we're representing Queensland proud and uh, hopefully we can bring home the chocolates for everybody. And uh, I know there'll be a lot of people tuning in to watch the race, so it's just great to be a part of it. She's a whole lot of fun, Shannon Price, and she's got a very good horse, Matthew, winner of 15 of 28 starts. They call him Owen for no other reason than they just came up with Owen when he rocked into the barn. Um, she brought a horse called All Promises uh, to the Taylor Mile and Messenger. I think it finished third and then fourth. And get this, All Promises is the mother of Not As Promised, who came over and raced in our derby for Graham Dwyer back in December. So, um, yeah, some pretty cool links there, but he, he's a really decent horse, speak the truth. Yeah, keeps going. Just keeps trucking all day long in most of the races I've watched him. He can be used up at both ends of his races and he just keeps going as well. It'll come down to barrier draws. We're hoping that a horse like him or a better Eclipse can get a nice gate and make it a true blue staying test. I'd love to see it, not so much with tired horses at the top of the straight, but you'd love to see them run the first half of the race quicker than they run the second half and, and make it a good, honest horse race rather than a walk around and a sprint home. But I think that's what the Australians will do. They won't come here and die wondering if they come up with good barrier draws, and that'll be the key for Speak the Truth and, and Better Eclipse. Fingers crossed they both draw one uh, and barriers sort of somewhere around that two to five mark. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he goes around Albion Park this week. He's third in the Miracle Mile. He goes round in a, uh, a rating band below free-for-all, which uh, they won't like it much. And he's come up with Barrier 2, so uh, you get a chance to see him this week. So Don't Stop Dreaming has been confirmed as a slot holder. He's the favourite for the race by Grins. He's at $2.80. Merlin, four fifty. Speak the truth, the same. Better Eclipse, $9. Then you get out to the likes of uh, Frankie Ferocious, who we're not sure if he's coming. Republican Party, who hasn't got a slot. Rock and Roll. Uh, do who has got a slot, sooner the better, They're all at $11, Old Town Road 13, self-assured 15, uh, and even a horse like Oliver Bubbles is uh, in the market along with Can't Find a Better Man around $17. A lot to unfold around uh, this year's Race by Grins, but don't stop dreaming, confirmed uh, with the Culling Breeding Syndicate slot. Let's get into the Tab Trot, the new race, and... The equal second favourite did this in the Lamb and Haywood Classic. His name, of course, uh, is Muscle Mountain. We hadn't seen him at Addington since show day, where things all unravelled for him, unfortunately, but oh, he was back and back big time. His fresh record is outstanding. Midnight Dash, Mystic Max trying to run at him, but he's a superstar. He's won 31 races now, and he's co-trained by Nina Hope. So we'll hear from uh, her and then Nathan Purden on Oscar Bonavina. Nina, the big boy's back. Yeah, no, it's, um, he never went away. <laughs> <laughs> nah, look, you came here tonight, and I know your expectations were, you wanted him to get around safely and all of those sorts of things and come back to the barn and, and great order, but he didn't know any of that, did he? He just knows when it's race night and he raced accordingly. Yeah, he, he, he looks tremendous. He was so relaxed before the race. He, um, yeah, it's so good to see him sort of yeah, do what he can do. Yeah, back to back wins for him in that race. He actually went a couple of seconds faster tonight. Oh, did he? Yeah. 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 No, Which, again, it's probably not surprising knowing yeah. what we know about him. Um, 
the Fred Shaw in a couple of weeks. It's almost perfect to the tab trot slot. It's exactly what he needs, a couple of weeks in between each of those races. Definitely, yeah, couldn't have planned better for him, definitely. Yeah. Do you expect much improvement in him? Looking at him, you, you look at him every day. You, you, you know when he's at his peak, and knowing you guys, there's a $575,000 race in a month. There'll be a couple of screws to turn, won't there? Oh, definitely. Like his his girth, I was struggling to do do it up today. Like he's he's put on a bit of weight, and um, yeah, so there'll be some improvement there. Yeah. Awesome to have him back, though. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, <laughs> a relief. Yeah, I'll sleep better tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan, not ideal with Oscar tonight, but you were saying he had a pretty high heart rate when he came back. Yeah, that's right. His heart was at 120, so he's obviously not right. We'll run a blood of him and um, you know, hopefully get an answer that way and uh, treat him with one and a quarter length. Yeah, well, that blood test has come back. He tied up quite a bit, Matthew, which is not surprising. Uh, obviously, well down on his previous six starts where he was unbeatable, including two at Group 1 level. So disappointing from that point of view. Great for Muscle Mountain, though. Start 50 it'll be for him in the Fred Shaw Memorial Trotting Championship. And 50-50 is what Nathan Purden has told me this afternoon as to whether uh, Oscar goes to that. Of course, he does have the option, Matthew, of going to the Flying Stakes the week before, the Thursday before the tab trot. So there are a couple of options there for Oscar Bonavina, but it's certainly not ideal with what's ahead. Yeah, he didn't even look happy heading into the first corner here at Addington, to be fair. He didn't trot squarely. You see him up the straight, he just had his ears half cocked. He just didn't look like a happy horse whatsoever, Oscar. So I'm glad they've found an excuse. We can turn the page with him, and uh, hopefully all things go well heading towards the Group 1. But Muscle Mountain, you can't help but love him. And the big thing, and I've always said it the entire way along, Greg, is that Greg and Nina Hope have got a real knack at just being able to get this horse ready in a fresh state and then maintain him. It was great to see. Ben uh, was obviously always going to drive him with a sit first up, let him mooch around, but I love the way that he put the pressure on at the top of the straight. Be an improver, for sure. He'd only had a couple of soft trials heading into it, Muscle Mountain, so it will be good to see him bounce off that run and with the two-week gap towards the Group 1. Uh, Midnight Dash was good. First up, great to see him return um, with a bit of uh, promise as well. And Mystic Max found the line, albeit a fair way away from the other two. But if he comes up with a draw, Muscle Mountain, Ben probably has the chance to use him, put him in the race and, and lead like he did in the race last year. And he's probably too good for them. Oscar Bonavina might have been the only danger heading towards it. And with the uncertainty around him, it looks as though Muscle Mountain's in for a big campaign. And, and like we said about the pacing race for the tab slot, trot race, it's going to come down to barrier draws. If Muscle Mountain draws outside of the Australians, then he could be in a bit of trouble. But if he draws inside of them, then it brings him right into play. But, but hopefully he continue climbing up the, the mountain, excuse the pun, and, and we, we look forward to seeing him on the uh, at Cambridge Raceway in the uh, tab trot slot. Yeah, and the Fred Shaw is $1.40 into $1.30 and Oscar's $3 and you're pretty wide for uh, the others, um, the likes of Euro style, Midnight Dash, uh, Love in the Port all around $15. Uh, just on Smoke and Banda, got a message from Craig Ferguson, he's out, nothing major, two or three months in the paddock, he'll come back, so um, that takes him out of a potential slot uh, in the tab trot. Let's go and have a look at Just Believe, who's the favourite uh, for the big final at $1.75. This is him winning the Scotch Notch Memorial. He's just a good horse. He's won 10 out of his last 11. Um, he's only been beaten by Call Me The Breeze, who's coming across for the tab trot as well. Uh, he beat Sleepy here. He did it really comfortably. He's now won 28 races, and he's just a, just a little superstar. Uh, Constantinople, who there's been some talk about for potentially... Uh, the Tony Hulahi slot goes round at Menangle in race number eight. Uh, and Queen Elida goes round in the uh, something about Mary from the outside of the second row on Saturday night at uh, Melton. It's about race number five. So she's in winning form, Matthew, but she's not at her best, is she? Not at her best by a long way. And, and she wasn't going to win the other night, I don't think. The horse who was going up the passing lane actually broke and she just sort of threw the head half to the side short of the post as well, Queen Elida. So... Look, I think Brent Lilly's got his work cut out to get her back to her absolute best. No question she's a superstar trotting mare, but for her standard, 
she's been winning races a lot easier than what she did there on, on Saturday night at, at Bendigo. There were a couple of uh, other really good races there as well, Greg. It was great to see the Lost Storm over the weekend return back to winning form, the Queensland Derby and Vic Bread winner. And the runner Kyle Marshall continues with the former New Zealand debark for the Ironons, who are still in the ownership of this horse. He won again over the weekend there in Victoria and looks headed to open class as well. So plenty of Kiwi interest over there. And we look forward to seeing the Australians come over and look for, for the TAB slot itself. They've got Queen Elida, so hopefully she can get back to her brilliant best. I don't think she's far away from it. We're just wanting to see that real acceleration from her at the back end of her races like we know that she can have. Yep, $1.75 is uh, the price for Just Believe. I think he's too short. I absolutely think if he draws eight or, or, or even, you know, six, seven or eight for that matter, he doesn't possess early gate speed. 2200 round Cambridge, not so sure that that's a great price. 354 Call Me The Breeze. Same price for Muscle Mountain, but the tab are boosting him to $4 at the moment. So if you want to back him, you can do so. $4 the price uh, for him. Oscar now out to $8 and RC Phoenix around the $15 mark. Well spotted on a couple of those uh, ex-Kiwis going around, Matthew. I, I got a, a, a message uh, via email from Mark Pope uh, to let me know that Kingdom Come had won another race. He's a 14-year-old out of some direction. He raced in the marathon at Albion Park the other day and he went, he broke four minutes for the 3,157 metre journey. What a remarkable horse. Um, 279,000, his 18th win. Wicked. I actually saw that. Kingdom yeah, did Come you? It, it, it sprung, I, I didn't even know he was still racing, to be honest, over there. I remember him. He rolled around the Addington Raceway quite a few times, but I'm sure that, that would have uh, given Lynn and, and Just about Justin one of the Dominion and Jerry the, the time. Team. Yeah, well, Lynn and, and Justin and, and Jerry Smith and the team down there at uh, Tipperita, I'm sure that they got a great thrill out of it. A, an amazing breed, isn't it? They just keep on trucking and uh, they're very good stars. So wonderful to, to see, but obviously with his age, his, his days are numbered as a race horse, but uh, as a race horse, uh, but with a staying progress, I'm sure that he'll make a decent station act somewhere over there in Australia. Yep, dead right, uh, Matthew. Right. On the Night of Champions, this is your last chance to enter. We've got a couple of hundred entries in for you and three mates uh, to come to the Night of uh, Champions. You simply have to answer this question. What feature race did Speak the Truth win at the Queensland Winter Carnival 2023? It's mentioned in the conversation I had with Shannon Price. And if you think cricket and a big, tall Queenslander, you'll get the answer to this. BoxEDNZ at gmail.com, one entry per person per week. This is the last week to enter. There's you and three mates to this wonderful race night being put together by Cambridge Raceway. Entain uh, have got right behind this as well. So get your entries in. They close by Sunday and then we'll do the draw on next week's show. So you've got plenty of time to get organised there. The question last week of course, uh, was uh, who drove Merlin to win uh, what used to be the Bohemia Crystal. Of course, it was Mark Purden, so plenty of people getting that one right. Let's go to Cambridge, speaking of that, and have a look at Thursday night where this horse, uh, Bet West, goes round. Matthew, I reckon he's a pretty good chance, trained by uh, Logan Hollis. And uh, Shane Robertson, Logan will drive. Only one horse off the second row. Gets beaten here by 2IC. Now, since this run, has uh, been back to Cambridge and was fourth and behind Fernley Cash. It was an excellent performance. I reckon it's a good chance in race six on Thursday night. Yeah, Logan and Shane have got their team going well at the moment. And, and looking through the fields there at Cambridge, he just looked the one horse, didn't he, Greg, who was well-placed, even from the second row barrier draw. You're looking to back a horse like him to get a nice run through at the start, potentially go around and put himself in the race. Daylight back to third always gives you confidence, doesn't it, when you see a horse placing in second. So colours are going well uh, and around Cambridge, he likes it there, as we know, and the form stacking up out of that recent effort. So why not, Greg? Might be one for your multis. Yep, I definitely think uh, he's your top top two uh, easily, I think, um, and he can absolutely win it. Uh, how did you get out of this, Matthew? This was Mota Carrara on Sunday. Uh, Morris McDermott and the, and the team there came up with the idea of St Patrick's Day, so every runner in the junior driver's race had to have some green in it. Um, but you managed to abscond from that race meeting. Um, I'm not suggesting for one minute that you wanted Andy McCook to make a fool of himself because he absolutely nailed it. But that can't be a lot of fun when you look up and see all of that greenery. 
It was funny, Morris McDermott sent me a text message uh, saying, oh, you'll have fun with that. And I said, no, I won't, Morris, because I'm not working that day, funnily <laughs> enough. Uh, I got shipped up to Auckland on, on Saturday to uh, work covering some of the Gallup's meetings, so we gave Andy the opportunity, and, yeah, that was planned a couple of weeks out. But I uh, sat there and watched. I wished him uh, all the very best, and, and as you say, he nailed it. Not an easy thing to do, and not something that we want every week. Uh, it's bad enough sometimes when we have about four sets of teal colours out on the track, let alone 14 sets of green colours. So uh, good on Andy, good on the club as well, but certainly something we don't want to be doing all the time, I can assure you of that. No, I knew you wouldn't have missed that, <laughs> but well done to Andy, he did uh, certainly cover it with a great aplomb. All right, short break for us on the other side, got some more domestic uh, races to preview, Addington and it's Waimati Cup Day, and we'll wrap up the show for you on your box seat. In your home straight, in your box seat, don't forget to get your entry in for the Night of Champions. Uh, details earlier in the show, but um, yeah, cricketer, mm, big, strong, Queenslander, last name Hayden. Yeah, maybe that might help you uh, get yourself an entry into that comp. Right, Addington Raceway, good night of racing alongside the Warriors Canberra being played a couple of hundred metres away. Very good race, race number seven. Let's have a look at a couple of the runners out of it. Here's Mighty Louie last week, Matthew. Terrific to see him back in form, but this was, for me, a great example of the skill of John Dunn. Great night for the Diamond Racing team. I think they won four, and they won three at the Mod on Sunday, so a terrific weekend for them, but he just outdrove them here, Jay Dunn. Was it the skill of John Dunn or the lack of awareness from everyone else, Greg? They left them alone, they walked around, ran a 56 last half. If you put any other horse in that race, now this isn't derogatory to Mighty Lou, but if you put Frank Indy in the same spot, wins is easy. They just left them alone and that is what John Dunn will do to you. If you let him get away with a half in four or five, he'll, he'll zip behind in 56 or run that third quarter quick enough that you can't get into it. So, yes, it was a good drive from John, but look, to be quite honest with you, Greg, they can be very boring races to watch when that happens. I was thrilled for the, the ownership team for Mighty Louie to get a win on the board. Certainly won't be as easy for him uh, this week. Good horse in here and beach ball. If they light him up at the start, he probably wins. But, yeah, as I say, good to see Motty Louie back. But, gee, it'd be good to see some competitiveness in our races sometimes, surely. I don't think he'd won a race since the Country Cup Championship Correct. in May. So it'd been a wee while. Uh, his stable mate, Who's Delight, he, he's a smart horse, this. He's, he's a bit of a weirdo, like a total weirdo. I'm not too sure when I'm going to catch him in a race. He's got a mind of his own, but have a look at the motor here. Gavin Smith uh, comes down the outside, uh, picks up Triple G, who will be hard to beat again. Uh, when he lines up, which is probably this week. I haven't gone that far. Yeah, it is this week. Um, he gets his chance in race number four. He'll be winning that. But Who's Delight has always impressed me as a horse that once he gets over a bit of ground, he can carry a speed for so long. I know he's won again over 1,980 metres here, Matthew, but... Um, he, he's got a big motor, and, and even talking to Gavin Smith post-race, you never know which one's going to turn up, but that one is very competitive, isn't he? You've spoken to Gav about this horse, and, and he sort of said that he probably looks a wee bit worse than, than what he is. He kind of gets the head around a wee bit, but he, he, he's not as difficult as what he looks for us uh, on screen. He, he looks as though he's a right old handful. I thought the race would pan out totally different to what it did, Greg. I thought he'd win it. But I thought he might be able to punch through and, and lead from the second row, but I was completely wrong. Triple G will be improved off that, bearing in mind that these horses are still on their way up. But as you say, might be a little bit weird, who's delight, but he's pretty good on his day. And with him rising in grade, I think he's one of those horses who will get better and better the more that he gets race hardened against the good horses. Whether he can beat Beach Ball this week, I'm not sure. If he leads, Beach Ball goes back potentially. But all things being equal, Beach Ball is a far superior horse in terms of his record. And the way that he's been trialling up, he should probably be winning. Yeah, he should. Uh, Heisenberg's in there as well. Um, this horse here, who's delight, another one of the $100,000 earners that's come out of Diamond Racing recently. Jimmy Armour was another of those. Right, let's go to race number nine and Rakiro Rocket. 
He's a pretty good horse, this guy, because I think the horse he beat, Warrior Chief, is going to go a fair way. He sort of half knocks off here, but Rakiro Rocket just charged home. Matthew in the hands of Tom Bamford. Uh, he gets into the, a race that's very similar in grade and uh, comes up with a better barrier draw. He's got barrier four, so I think he's a massive chance of winning the ninth. Well, I would say Ronnie Dawes' phone would have been running hot after this. Surely there's been some big, big offers, and I, I would say we're talking big money as well for Rakiro Rocket. Stays in the same grade. Tom Bamford's doing a, a glorious job with his horses at the moment and, and chanced his arm with driving that one himself, which meant he got half points. Stays in the same grade. Should probably win again, Greg, and I'd be very surprised if he was racing here for too much longer because the more he wins, the bigger the price gets on him, and, and he looks a very good horse in the making. Yeah, he definitely does, Matthew. Good program on Friday night. It's Waimati Cup as well at Awamaru. So I wanted to go and have a look at uh, that feature. Here's Mawanga at Reefton. Now, it's blimmin' hard to come wide around that last bend and, and make up ground. Jimmy Armour wins this race and then won again at the Mott last week. Uh, so there was no disgrace, and she's tough goes to this race uh, this week too, but Mawanga is good enough to win this, Matthew. I think he starts off 10 metres on Sunday. He'll be improved with that run, and uh, he's always uh, he's always looked a horse that's going to progress a fair way. One of my favourite things, Greg, has been the country championship, particularly last year, the build-up towards it and the race. I've said it time and time again, it's one of my favourite races that I've watched, the one that Mighty Louie won here last year, courtesy of the competitiveness of it. And I think all of these races in the build-up to it have been competitive, and that race is certainly the same. Homebush Lad off the back mark. Kikarangi Blue, who might need to have this and maybe one more start to get into the final. She won the Roxburgh Cup, so that could be enough for her to get in. And one horse who has been flying is Smoke on the Water. Go back and have a look at his run in the Ashburton Cup. It was a cracking run, and he didn't get much luck the other day either, Smoke on the Water, in a very strong race. So I'd be happy to play him each way there on Sunday. And Matt Purvis's team going very well. Picked up three wins at the Mott on Sunday, and I reckon his form can continue with Smoke on the Water this coming Sunday. All right, you might get some nice value about that one too. Let's have a look at the map for you to see where you can go racing. Thursday night action out, uh, oh sorry, Wednesday to start with if you see this early enough. Eight races, 2.55, the two-year-olds go around there. Interesting to see what happens there. Cambridge, uh, they race on Thursday night. They've got the eight race program, 5.29. 10 out of Addington, 4.52. Uh, so the last race finishes before the Warriors Canberra game. Massive night. That's gone to 200,000. The Group 1 Northern Derby. Uh, of course, the Pascos, the Jewelers, Northern Oaks there as well. Uh, the Waimati Cup on the grass at Oamaru on Sunday. The 11 race program The 11.55. The start time for that. Matthew, just wanted to say thanks for coming on once again. Filling in for Mickey G. He'll be back next week. But gee, there's some good racing coming up domestically across the nation. There is, Greg. And just quickly before I go, I want to make mention of Lavros Lodge, which has come up for sale a short time ago. A beautiful big training centre. Um, Kipros and Jane have obviously made the call that they want to move closer to town. Regan Todd, Derek and Adele Jones, Russell Kennedy training there at the moment. Could well be an opportunity. Now, I'm not fully educated on it, but surely someone somehow... HRNZ, whoever, we can find the money to at least buy this place and turn it into a training centre. Now, I know people would agree, disagree. Food for thought, potentially. Could be the future of harness racing here in Canterbury, a place like that, if we could set it up. The, the track's big enough. There's enough area there to put a couple of barns on. I know that it would cost a little bit of money, but in the long run, probably not a bad investment. So I certainly hope that that property stays within harness racing somehow. We look forward to uh, seeing uh, what the future holds for Kip Ross and Jane. So good luck to them with the sale of Lavros Lodge. Yep, no, well said, uh, Matthew. Beautiful track, 1,200 metres, based on Addington. I've often said, or used to say to Robert Cameron, if we have a problem with uh, flooding or anything, we'll just come out here and race. It's uh, certainly one heck of a complex. That's been your box seat for this week. Michael and I will join you again in seven days' time. The Box Seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Harness Link, for all your worldwide harness racing coverage. Brecken Farms, New Zealand Bloodstock Standard Bread. IRT, it's your horse and our passion. Garrard's Horse and Hound. Lincoln Farms, Renwick Farms, Harness Racing New Zealand. 
The clubs, Auckland, Cambridge, Addington and Ashburton and the TAB.